Welcome back. Let's now begin our exploration of second language acquisition. The ESOL instructor understands current theories and principles of language acquisition and applies this knowledge to promote adult learners' English language development. Keep this concept in mind as you continue through the course. During Webinar 1, we will be discussing this statement, and it truly is the basis of our work in this course. So what is this thing called SLA? Where does it come from and why is it so important? SLA is the study of how second or third or fourth, as we know with many of our students, languages are learned. It is the study of what is and is not learned and why. SLA theories provide us with the various hypotheses and explanations for how languages are learned and the factors that influence this process. SLA theories draw from many other disciplines, psychology, linguistics, psycholinguistics, sociology, and more, confirming what we all know to be true that language acquisition does not occur in a vacuum. There are many factors impacting successful language acquisition that must be considered during the process of instruction. We asked some of our colleagues to discuss their experience with SLA instruction using the guided questions found and the supporting explanation for Standard 1 to guide their comments. As a refresher, those questions were, what personal and instructional factors impact how successfully my students learn English? Why is authentic interaction so effective in language learning? And what stages do learners go through as they acquire a second language? So let's hear what they have to say. Our first comments will come from Nancy Labonte, an ESOL instructor and professional developer. What personal and instructional factors impact how successfully my students learn English? Factors that seem to make a difference with my students being successful, and this is at all levels but mostly the higher levels, are student motivation and commitment to learning. And this simply means that they commit to learning both in and out of the classroom as well as actively engaged while they're in the process. But personality has been a prominent one that has influenced how I have worked with my students as well. And what I mean by this is that I have seen the more outgoing extroverted types, and this is sometimes culturally influenced of course, engage more readily in communication with their peers in small group work, etc., which, tend, which tends to mean that they progress more quickly and as their confidence and successes build, their progress is even more rapid. But there are also those, and perhaps these are the quieter ones, who are quick and eager to get into settings with native-born people or into jobs with English-speaking spe people, maybe. So I suppose this is also risk-taking and confidence at play as well. And some of us, including our students, and there is research on this, of course, have more of an aptitude for language learning and therefore a disposition that allows for more natural acquisition. So those are other factors I see. As far as intelligence, I've often seen studious learners, obviously very smart with great education backgrounds, progress more slowly with the authentic communication that we know they need and want. Great with the grammar and the textbook material and even the writing process, but struggling with oral language, the communicative process that is essential according to the theory. Sure, age is a factor in language learning success. The younger we can learn a language, the better. But I'll never forget one of my first case studies, so to speak, a beginner middle-aged ESL student who struggled, where, under the guidance of a seasoned colleague, we determined that anxiety about the acculturation process was at play more than age, as she stagnated with English acquisition at the lower level. I think she was in the program for about two years before she finally started to make some really good progress, which coincided with her finally adapting to U.S. culture and her community. She had had different teachers, and we were aware of her personal struggles, but these were psychological factors at play. But despite various factors that obviously do impact learning English, there are a lot of methods, approaches, and resources we can use to try and support or accommodate as many students as possible in our ESL classes. And this is really what keeps me intrigued about this work. The ESL craft is like a puzzle to me that needs to be solved anew each time I start with a new group. And that's why we need to keep our practices fresh and updated through professional development. There is certainly a lot to know about teaching ESL, but we are all learners. And we need to learn from our students, who they are and what they bring to the learning, and how best to facilitate their language learning. Next is Pesha Black, Director of ESOL at Holyoke Community College. 
One of my favorite things about being a language teacher is getting to watch learners make sense of the language for themselves, right? So some approach English expecting that they'll be able to find patterns, that it'll make sense. Um, and then other students don't come in that way, right? Some students have had um, all their formal education previously really depending on their ability to memorize things and, and very little on their critical thinking skills. Um, some maybe have struggled in the classroom before or have struggled trying to learn English on their own. Some have very little formal education um, and they don't necessarily expect that they'll be able to make sense of English and that their thinking is an important tool in learning the language. So to support students in making that transition, I try to plan as many activities in the classroom as I can that put students in the role of detectives and thinkers about pattern. And then as students make mistakes, I try to think about their thinking, right? What's their hypothesis that they're operating under that's causing them to make the mistake that they're making? Because if I can understand what my students are thinking, then it's easier to build a bridge. And if students really can make sense of the pattern for themselves, then they own it and they can use it. And last but not least, Laura Larson Stevovich, an ESOL instructor and Sabe's ESOL consultant. Why is authentic interaction so effective? I'd say first of all that authentic interaction is generally social and and we know that social interaction is highly motivating for our students. If you think about how we learn our first language, it's a social process and we basically learn the language from interacting with other people. Uh, also, authentic interaction is meaningful. There's usually a strong relationship in auth between authentic interaction and daily life. So we could give our students a project, for example, um, maybe there's a problem in the community that they could work on and they could write a let they could think of some solutions and write a letter to the newspaper or the mayor. Or um, they could interview someone in their community. In authentic interactions, they really need to work together to come to an understanding of something or to produce a project together. And they have to communicate fairly successfully in order to reach their goal together. So they need to practice basic communication skills like asking for clarification, you know, could you repeat that? Um, checking comprehension, um, sorry I didn't get that, did you say Tuesday or Thursday? And also they get the necessary feedback from their group or their partner that maybe something wasn't, something they said wasn't understood. But the basic reason that authentic interaction in the classroom is really valuable, the basic, the power of it for me, is that students are practicing the skills that they need to communicate in daily life. All those skills they practice in an authentic interaction are directly transferable to daily life, especially to the workplace. I hope that you'll agree that hearing from the field is very meaningful and it is always helpful to get insights and thoughts from our peers. In language learning, keep in mind, there is no single theory that explains everything about language learning. There is general consensus that certain principles and practices support language learning. And these research-based principles point to the importance of authentic, meaning-focused interaction and the acquisition of any language. This is what Standard 1 is all about, and this is where it gets interesting for teachers. Being aware of the findings of current SLA research and reflecting on their implications in your instruction helps you to remain current in your instructional practices. Webinar 1 will introduce you or reintroduce many of you to the most current and subscribed to theories and research in SLA. Ultimately, the students will benefit from these findings, and after all, that is why we're all here. So that is a very brief introduction to Standard 1, Principles of SLA. Using this information, we will continue our journey into a deeper understanding of the instructional theories, methods, and approaches to SLA in Webinar 1.
It is very important that you complete the following activities prior to our first webinar. We want to have an interactive, engaging exchange of ideas. First, we'd like you to complete the How Do Adults Learn English questionnaire and bring that along to Webinar 1. This document can be found in the pre-webinar activities in your Blackboard course. Complete the pre-workshop self-assessment assignment located in the preliminary activities as well and submit that prior to Webinar 1. And review Standard 1 one more time, just so that it is fresh. We look forward to seeing you in Webinar 1. Thank you very much.